Data layer is one of the key components in Google Tag Manager, and Data Layer Push allows you or your developers interact with it. But sometimes, for some reason, it just does not work. In this video, I will explain the reasons and possible solutions. So let's take a look. The first reason why Data Layer Push might not be working is because maybe your code has some typos. On this demo page, I have enabled the Google Tag Manager preview mode. In fact, I can even reload the page just to get those events. And then if I open the console in the developer tools and then type data layer push and then event test, so this code is correct. If I hit enter, then that event will be right here. However, if I do a typo, for example, data layer is with lowercase l, that will not work because when you're working with data layer, it is case sensitive. So it must be exactly written like this with the uppercase L and all other letters are lowercase. Also, maybe it's possible that uh, you are missing some curly braces or maybe some other symbols somewhere in the code. For example, if you try to enter the code like this, it will also not work. So make sure that you triple check your code to verify that you are following the requirements of the data layer. Also feel free to refer to the documentation of Google Tag Manager. Another possible reason is maybe your developers who implemented Google Tag Manager, maybe they renamed the data layer because that is also possible. When you go to the Google Tag Manager container and then click on the container ID, here is the snippet that you must install in the head of all website pages. And here, is the name of the data layer. By default, it is like this, but technically it is possible to rename it to something else. For example, on this demo page, if I do the right click, then view page source, and then look for gtm.js, here I see that it is named not data layer, but custom data layer. So if data layer is renamed, the usual data layer push function will not work. Let me show you this in action. So on this page, the custom data layer is initiated. Now I will refresh the preview mode by clicking the preview button. And the events are still here. However, if I go to the website, open the console in developer tools, and then use the data layer push, and this code is correct right here. So if I hit enter and go to the preview mode, that event will not be visible right here because now my Google Tag Manager container, including the preview mode, it is using custom data layer. So if this is your situation, then the data layer push function should be renamed to something like custom data layer because that's the exact name that is used in the container snippet right here. If there was another name here, then that another name should be used right here as well. Now, if I hit enter, that event appears right here. Now let's look at one more situation. So now my Google Tag Manager container snippet is not modified, so I'm using data layer. Then in the console, I'm also using the correct data layer push code and the preview mode is enabled. But if I activate this code and then go to the preview mode, that event is still not visible. So a very popular reason for that is that maybe there is some code on the website that overwrites the data layer and breaks the data layers functionality. Usually that is visible somewhere in the code in the shape of data layer equals and then something. Because here's how it works. When Google Tag Manager container snippet is loaded, it initiates the proper data layer. But then if some code is activated later that also sets the data layer, this overrides the functionality of the data layer and then just creates it as an empty array or maybe something is within these square brackets. This does not matter. What matters is that if there's some code on a website that fires after Google Tag Manager snippet and it says data layer equals to something, this breaks the functionality. So if you want to check that, then do the right click on your website, then view page source and keep looking for data layer equals or maybe without a space, but basically keep looking for something that says data layer equals. Now this code right here, it is correct because it tells the code to keep reusing the current data layer or if data layer does not exist, then create a data layer. But the other code, 
which looks, for example, something like this, it just overrides the data layer without checking anything on a page. So this kind of code should be removed or it should be changed to that syntax right here where we have window data layer equals window data layer then or an empty array. So this is okay, but that code right here, it just breaks the data layer and your developers should either remove it or fix it. Now, another possible reason why data layer push is not working is timing. It is important when you are trying to push data to the data layer. Of course, that depends on the code. Technically, you could write a more elegant code that checks if the data layer is working. However, let me show you one example. Here in the source code of the website, pretty high in the code, I have a data layer push code right here. But the Google Tag Manager container snippet that sets the data layer is way below. So it means that in this case, first I'm trying to push data to the data layer before data layer is actually created. The symptom of this problem will look like this. If you go to the website, open developer tools, and then you refresh the page, you will get this error that data layer is not defined. It means that some code was trying to push data to the data layer or in some other way to work with the data layer, but data layer was not available at that moment. So in this case, there are two solutions. The first one would be to talk with developers and have this code added somewhere below the Google Tag Manager container snippet or another option, if you still want to have this code activated as soon as possible, then your developers would need to add an additional line of code. And that code would look like this. Let me reload the page. And here it is. Window data layer equals window data layer, then two pipes and an empty array. If you translate this to plain English, it means if data layer already exists, then keep using that data layer. Otherwise, create an empty array as a data layer. And then if this line of code is added, it means that it will create a new data layer if it does not exist. And this code will then push that particular event or some other data to that empty array right here. And when Google Tag Manager code snippet is loaded, it will keep using that very same data layer, which was created right here. So it's always a good practice while working with data layer push to use this particular code right here. And then the final reason that I wanted to cover in this video is iframes. If you are dealing with a situation where you have a parent page and then inside that parent page, an iframe is embedded, which basically means like a website within a website. If you have some data layer pushes happening inside the iframe, but your Google Tag Manager is installed on the parent page, then those data layer pushes will not be accessible to Google Tag Manager on the parent page. An easy non-technical way to understand if you're dealing with an iframe would be to do the right click somewhere inside this window because I, well, technically I know that this is iframe right here, but if I do the right click, it will tell me reload frame or view frame source. This refers to iframe. While if I do the right click here, nothing about frames is mentioned right here. So if data layer push happens inside the iframe, you cannot track that on the parent page. Unless, of course, some additional measures are implemented, for example, a post message method. Basically, it allows developers to communicate between the parent page and the iframe. So in general, the idea would be that the iframe should be sending some information with post message to the parent page, and then the parent page would catch that information and then would push it to the data layer. Explaining how this works in great detail would go out of scope of this video, but I explain how to work with iframes in my intermediate slash advanced Google Tag Manager course. I will post a link to it below the video. But if you ask me, based on my experience, the two most common reasons why data layer push is not working are typos and then broken data layer when you have Google Tag Manager code snippet loaded and then at some point later, there is a code somewhere on the website where it says data layer equals and then something. So this will overwrite the data layer and will basically break it. So your developers should remove that code or write it in a way so that the data layer equals is also using data layer push. So it should be something like data layer push and then something inside the parentheses. 
Hopefully, you have now managed to fix the data layer push problem. If you found this video useful, hit the like button. That will help me understand what videos do you like and what should I create in the future. Also, if you want to learn more about Google Tag Manager or GA4, then subscribe to this channel. My name is Julius, this is Analytics Mania, and I'll see you in the next video.